All right, let's address that elephant in the room. You don't have to squeeze your bags, your mesh bags. This is all about, do I squeeze it or not? Oh, can nobody stop this love? So baby, meet me down by the road. No quiver away. the cool dark water meets the full moonlight. If we can sneak away, maybe we could be together. Yeah. All right, welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to explain about mesh bags these things here, when you're making wine from fruit, I love these things. I will not give them up. If you don't have them, you need to get some. I got links in the description, but now, if you're just joining us for the first time, we got a lot of wine stuff out on this channel. If you're gonna make wine from fruit, you gotta use a mesh bag, or you're just gonna create a lot of problems. These things are dirt cheap. Just grab a couple. It's very fine mesh, at least the ones I got links for. So your fine particles are not going to get out of here as fast. But if I take this and I have my fruit in here and I'm squeezing it, trust me, the particles are getting into your wine. And I will tell you another thing. A lot of people ask, do I reuse my mesh bags? Oh my goodness, yes. You can use these for like 10 batches. Usually the string will break before on the top, but yes, reuse these bags. Uh, you know, there's nothing that hurts. They can be a pain to clean, but I always find turn it upside down and, and use a sprayer in your sink and just spray the fruit and it will eventually come out. But make sure you're sanitizing it after you're done. I get a lot of questions about why don't you squeeze your fruit when you have it in your, your mesh bag and fermentation is done. So we're going to get into a little bit of that. And then also the preparation of your fruit. That is very important before you even put it into the mesh bag. So that's what I want to show you in this video. And you can see by this wine here how clear it is. Uh, there's no pulp in here because I've used those filtering agents. Make sure you're watching that video, that Cheeto sand and kill a sand or whatever it is, that liquor quick. Make sure you're watching that video because if you do get those fine particles in there, that's gonna help you clear it up. Let me just explain because I know there's a lot of confusion out there and this will hopefully explain different things. Now, when you're preparing your fruit, as you'll see in this part of the video, there's no sense into juicing it. A lot of people say, can I juice my, my fruit and use the juice? No, I do not recommend that. When you juice it, you think you're getting all the pulp out, but trust me, you're getting a lot of fine pulp in there when you're juicing your fruit. Do not use a juicer. If you follow my recipe, it accounts for extra fruit and extra juice. There is no need to juice it, to press it, to squeeze your bags. I've already accounted for that. Do not squeeze your wine bags, your mesh bags. So I'm just lifting this bag up, hopefully to drain it out a little bit as much as I can without forcing it out. And that's about all she wrote. And also, I know a lot of you have bought them fancy presses that you, you got the screw top on and it's pressing down on that fruit. We don't need that kind of equipment. Again, you are getting so many fine particles in there that you're going to spend weeks with extra rackings to get out. There is no need to squeeze that and get all the juice. We've got extra fruit in this. Now, when you prepare your fruit, you've seen me do it on this channel many times. I highly recommend you freeze your fruit, like your berries and your uh, your mangoes, put them in the freezer for a day or so. Then when you get them out, that frozen is going to release a lot of the juices. If you have like a berry, like a, a blueberry, that freezing is going to expand and crack those skins. That's all you need to do. When you see me make wine, you'll see me just gently chop it up a little bit, but do not pulverize it. I cannot say that enough. Trust me you're going to get a lot of juice out of this fruit. And because we're using extra, it's way plenty. Let me tell you, if you've ever bought wine, which I know you all have, 
it's not going to have that fruit flavor because they're not putting there in as much fruit as we are as home winemakers. I put extra fruit because I wanted extra bold. And then all that extra fruit is going into your bottles of wine. No need to squeeze your fruit and create multiple rackings. It's just not necessary. So you see what I mean? There's not much left in this. It's nothing but strawberries. There's no watermelon at all. No need to juice your fruit either. You're getting enough juice that's going to, after it's been fermenting for 7 to 14 days, that juice is coming out of that fruit. Trust me. I've done this so many times. I like to limit my rackings to at most three rackings. If you're juicing or you're squeezing or pulverizing that wine, you're going to need extra rackings. And remember, after the primary fermentation, oxygen is your enemy. As you rack, it's introducing oxygen. It's going from the hose down to the carboy that's filled with oxygen. So the less rackings you can do, the better off. You have too many rackings, I'm telling you. Some of you have told me it tastes like vinegar. That's what's going to happen. It's going to turn into vinegar because you've had all those rackings. It's just not necessary to deal with the pulverizing of your fruit and creating those fine fruit particles that you are going to have trouble getting out. So I hope that clears it up about this match bag and why I don't squeeze it. Now I'll start to lift this bag up so we can drain some of the juice out as we go. And then why I don't press that juice out and why I don't use juicers. So many of you have asked for it. I've commented on, I don't know, hundreds it seems where people ask that question. It's just... I don't recommend it. I know some of you are not going to listen and you're still going to squeeze it and you're still going to pulverize it or juice it. But if it works for you, good. Do it the way you want. I'm just not recommending it on this channel because it's just not necessary. We got plenty of juice from all that fruit we put into this wine. Now, I will tell you one thing. I've done it. I've squeezed it back. But usually it's only when I get up in that carboy and I'm a little bit light from where I like it to be the level where it's in the neck, I will squeeze a little bit or I'll just lift the bag and trust me, it will drip another bottle of wine out of that thing. So that's what I'll do is I'll just lift that up or gently just squeeze just enough to, to get it topped up where I might be a little bit short. There we go. I just added some water to the bottle. And I'm just going to add a little bit of this in small quantities. Water is okay. You could add water. That's no problem. But in that case, I will try and get a little bit out of that mesh bag. And then we'll just kind of let lift the bag up as we go and just let it drip. You don't want to squeeze it because you're just going to put unnecessary pulp in there. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of comments about this that you squeeze it all the time. If it works for you, go right ahead. I'm just not going to recommend it on this channel for the beginner winemaker. It's not necessary. We got plenty of juice in this thing. And that's it. It's time to cut this watermelon because it sounds good. I'll try my watermelon wine with this tonight. Until next time, make sure you're liking and subscribing. I got a lot of good stuff planned coming down this channel. And thanks again for subscribing. And all my international subscribers, thank you. Until next time, have a great day and happy winemaking.